takataka e te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki pai, e hiake ana te atākura, he teo, he huka, he hauhu. Ti hei, mauri ana. Tuhia ki te rangi, tuhia ki te whenua, tuhia ki te ngākau o ngā tangata katoa. Ko te mea nui, ko te aroha. Ti hei, mauri ana. Kia ora. Ka tuku aku mihi ki te ronga rawa, ko ia te timatanga me te whakamutunga o ngā mea katoa. Kia koutou i te hunga mate, huki rā koutou i Hawaii ki nui, Hawaii ki roa, Hawaii ki pā māmā. Kia tātou te hunga ora, tātou e takahi nei i ngā wawai tapu o mātou tikina. Kia koutou, ko a rauka nei ki roto i tēnei wānanga, tēnei te mihi mai oha, kia koutou. Tēnā koutou katoa. Ko wai au, ko mau au te maunga, ko te awa nui te moana, ko ngai te ahi te hapu, ko ngai te rangi te iwi, ko tāki te mi te waka, ko tamaika te pere tōku pāpā. Ki te taho o tōku māma, ko ōtawa te maunga, ko raparapa ahoi te awa, ko waitaha me tapu i ka ngā iwi, ko te aroa te waka, ko te roa i kōpiri tōku māma, engari, ko Miriana te pere ahau. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora everyone and welcome, welcome today. Uh, my name is Miriana. I am the newly-ish appointed Māori Health Promotion Strategist for Health Promotion Forum New Zealand. Warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us. There's a very important hui happening as we're speaking. So thank you again for joining us. Um, I just want to give a few thanks before we get started. Uh, firstly, to our awesome guest speaker, Grant. Uh, the CEO for P Public Health Association New Zealand and my new uncle uh, <laughs> and just an all-round good guy. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Grant. Kia ora. Um, and I'll let Grant introduce, him, introduce himself a bit better when he, when he speaks. Uh, also, um, to my team, HPF, and to my guardian angels in the background, Emma and Lavinia, and now Sione, um, thanks for helping me today. Without you, this would not happen. Um, to everyone here, thank you for taking time away from your mahi, your whānau, and your friends uh, to join us mm. and spend some time learning mm. together. Uh, and also to our competition winners, um, there was three of you. Well done. Congratulations. Glad you could be here. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the Wibby Shop today. All right, so before we get started, Fano, um, just quickly about me. So yes, my name is Miriana. I come from the Bay of Plenty, but I live up here in Tamaki Makoto, and I'm mahi here, and my daughter goes to school here. And pretty much um, Māori Health Promotion Strategist, what I do in a nutshell, is I explore and analyse every option for Māori Health and figure out how, how we and everyone that I work with can improve and make it better. All right, so we're going to get into it. We're going to get into the presentation soon. What I'd like you to do is get comfortable, get your snacks, get your pen, get your paper, um, and get comfortable because we're going to go through the formatting um, before we start. Kapai, kapai. All right. Before we get into the juicy stuff, all right, so some of you might have seen this before. So this is a picture of what the world looks like when my grandparents were growing up. Okay, this is the normal. Um, so you might, if you're lucky enough, you might be around some older people and you might hear them say things like, oh, you know, I'm just going up the line. So they might be traveling from Whangarei to, um, to Wellington. And they're saying, oh, I'm just going up the line which might confuse lots of people. So this is the type of thing they're referring to. Okay, so this is what the world looked like when they were growing up. Not so much for my, my generation, um, but this is an example of the two different worlds that exist. And this is the stuff that we're gonna explore today. All right, so, and just FYI, just so you know, that's where I come from there. That's my little neck of the woods. And Uncle Grant comes from that place over there. And um, so I know we've got some whānau from Whangarei, Mahitahi Hauora. 
So they're from Te Tai Tokiro. Kia ora mahitahi. So this is two different ways that you can um, identify Northland. So everyone, most people know, that, know it as Te Tai Tokiro, the northern ones. Um, but you might have heard it be referred to as Te Hiti o Te Ika, which means the tail of the fish. So again, lots of little things like that that you might not be aware of. And that's... Um, shows the different worlds, the worldviews that happen all around us. We might not even know it. All right. And of course, this is the way that most people see Aotearoa. All right. Web shop format. So we do have a particular format today, Fano. Uh, we've got two key concepts that we're going to discuss. Um, I'm going to come in at the start and talk about the foundational stuff. And then Grant's going to come and he's the main event and he's going to give the juicy, meaty stuff around that particular corridor. After that, because we, you know, this is a, a bit of an online wānanga, we are encouraging you all to participate as well. Some of you have sent in some really um, valuable, juicy insights with your pre webshop stuff. It was really awesome. We're going to share some of that, um, but the participation doesn't end there. We uh, really want you guys to question and comment during this webby shop because that's where the magic happens <clears throat> and that, that's Grant's favourite part. So please continue to do that throughout the, um, the corridor and then we'll come to that part at, at the end of each section. So we're going to do that. We're going to repeat that for topic two and at the very end, we're going to ask you to turn your camera on, no makeup and all, and we're going to take a picture of you. So hopefully that's all right with everyone. Kapai. All right. Lastly, before we get into it, please, Fano, ask away. Make comments and give feedback in our chat. Okay? <clears throat> Knowledge is no good if it's just in your head. Right? No te roro, naku te roro. With your knowledge and my knowledge, we can all do this together. So, um, yes, please. Get on that chat. Blow that chat up. All right. Into it. So just to recap, these are the two questions that we're discussing today. So question one, how can health promoters better serve hapu and Māori communities in post-COVID world? And number two, determinants of health from a tangata whenua perspective. What are the implications in the real world and what should we focus on moving forward? Those are the two things we're going to really wrestle with today. Um, but firstly, before we do that, I just wanted to talk about some of the feedback that you gave us regarding whakapapa and tangata whenua and identity, the pre-webinar stuff. It was really important that you gave it a go. I understand lots of you are busy, but some of you gave it a really good shot and, um, and came back with some really awesome feedback. So I'm going to read out a little bit of it. Uh, so here we've got about whakapapa. Someone wrote back, the more that I'm able to understand the whakapapa of my area, the more valuable I am as a health promoter for my region. When we have a better understanding of our people, our community, we are able to provide better care and services for them. Kia ora, kia ora. It's really good that you understand that. Um, people forget sometimes that there are different layers within Māori Um Another person wrote, understanding whakapapa allows me to connect with people I work with in my role. It shows me how we are bonded together and establishing early bonds allow relationships to grow quickly. Absolutely, yes. All right, if I know I have a connection with you, we're going to grow that. So kia ora uh, for that person. And the next one, your whakapapa connects you to who you are and where you are from. Without that connection, it is hard to feel grounded. So although whakapapa is a Māori concept, um, everyone has a whakapapa. It might be called something else in a different culture, but you still have whakapapa. All right, and tangata whenua. So this is some feedback that some of you gave back. Thank you again. Someone wrote, it's important to connect with the local marae who were tangata whenua first, as it was their whenua, rohe, that we are working in. Connect with Māori who lived in the community also, but the first contact should be with kaumātua from the local marae. Um, kia ora. So what can happen sometimes is if you don't know, you don't know. 
And some people think, you know, don't understand, again, that there are layers to Māoridom. So they just choose and ask the first Māori person that they know. Okay, so this person understands that there is appropriate people. And that's something that we all need to share and understand with our colleagues and our friends and everyone. Someone else wrote, I feel the more I learn, the less I know. And the person who wrote that, you are not on your own. Okay, this, you know, you don't get a PhD in Māoriology in a couple of weeks. All right, it's a process, it's a journey, and it can be hard at times, but know that you're not alone and you're not the only one that feels like that, but you just keep going. All right, someone wrote, it's important to learn, give it a go, and prepared. Be prepared to get things wrong, then be gently or sternly correctly. Now, that's the hard part. Um, it's really hard when you get um, a big slap on the hands when you're just trying to give it a go. Um, but that's something that we all kind of need to get used to. Um, for for Māori people, it's, it's the criticism can be much more harsh because we're expected to know better. <clears throat> um, so I... I urge you to um, stay strong and, and keep forging ahead. Um, someone wrote, ask what is appropriate rather than assume. Yes, definitely. And someone wrote, we are in a position to advocate for positive change. And it is important that we are reflecting the values of those in our community accurately. Yes, okay. Um, you really got to get into those communities, especially with tangata whenua. You really got to get into them and be immersed in them for, to really know what it is that they that they need and they want. And in our roles, that's part of what we do as advocacy, as advocates. Um, so I take up your right, Heidi Tony, carry on. Well done. Uh, so yeah, that's just a bit of the feedback that we got. We got lots more, but we're gonna flesh through that after the webshop and send that information out. All right, topic one. How can health promoters better serve hapu and Māori communities in the post-COVID world? All right, firstly, before I pass it over to Grant, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> get into some, a little bit of um, understanding around Māori and tangata whenua and also servant leadership. Oi tank long. All right, this is just a little snapshot of what it can look like. So there's me. All right, and so I work in Auckland. This is where I live, I work, I study. I consider myself part of the Māori community, not because I'm Māori, just because I'm born Māori doesn't mean I'm automatically part of the Māori community, but because I've worked with uh, Mani Reo Marae, I've worked with um, Māori Women's Welfare League and the communities in the area that I live in. Um, and I've done a lot of representation for them as well. So I am part of the Māori community, but I'm not tangata whenua. My, my whenua is in Tipuke and Tauranga. That's where I fuck a papa to. Okay, so there's a very distinct difference. Now, if you're not Māori at all, where does that leave you? Um, in all honesty, you you are not tangata whenua unless you fuck a papa to somewhere in Aotearoa. But you can be part of the Māori community. You don't have to be Māori to be part of the Māori community. If in your community you mahi with, with the local Māori and they accept you and they consider you part of their Māori community, then you then you are. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily based on ethnicity. If they can see that you're working for their aspirations, they will adopt you into their community. Not tangata whenua, but still part of the community. So that's the difference with that one. Important to know um, when you start getting into the deeper mahi. Uh, and just real quickly, servant leadership. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why servant leadership? What's the big deal with servant leadership, service type leadership? Um, service leadership and Māori leadership are two very, they, they're different things. They're not the same thing, but they are guided by similar values. <clears throat> and that's why service leadership can be something that um, if you want to, after this webshop, you can look into and research a bit more um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a type of leadership style that resonates with Māori. And I'm going to go over those real quickly. So at the top there, 
uh, service leadership meets the needs of the community, and that echoes along the same lines of manakitanga, which is quality and care for others. Uh, service leadership prioritizes aspirations of the community over personal ambition. It's not about me, it's what is best for the community. And again, that that resonates with manakitanga, respecting the mana of others. Mariana, yes. Mariana, sorry. Um, I can hear you very loud and clear, but uh, there are a couple of people in our hui who asked if you can check your volume. They can't hear you really well. Oh, sorry for shame. the disruption. Hang on. I hope I'm not too loud. How's this? Can we get a thumbs up? I don't want to blow your guys' ears out. Yeah, as I said, I, I can hear you well. I think just the others who have... Uh, I can hear you well. Hopefully, um, if it's still a bit funny, then I can try some different headphones. But just let me know, people. Just let let Sione know if you can't hear, and he'll 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 guide me. Uh, okay, so we're going to carry on. So leadership under service leadership is about stewardship and caretaking. So that is along the similar lines of rangatiratanga, not the same, but similar. Um, rangatira is a, is a term that's kind of thrown around quite a lot these days, um, but the essence of rangatiratanga is um, having skill and prowess. Certain people have the skill and prowess to, to get certain things done or to achieve certain tasks. And that's along with, that is the leadership, the stewardship and caretaking. Um, uh, that, that aligns with service leadership. Um, sharing power, something that seems to be really hard to do uh, in service leadership, that's what they focus on, sharing power. power. And in Māori leadership, it, it's something that you, you naturally have to do in terms of tanga. So it's not one person who makes all the decisions. If you've ever been to a whānau hui, you know that the corridor can go on for a very long time because everyone wants to have their say sometimes, but that's part of the process. Yep, and that's sharing the power and the decision-making power. And also um, service leadership uh, is guided by ethics, morals, and spirituality, which again is a similar to wairua tanga. Wairua tanga and spirituality, not the same, but similar. Um, and uh, in, in te ao Māori, we have our connection to our gods and to the cosmos, the universe, and um, the energies that flow. Uh, and so that, so that's why I think service leadership is a style that a lot of people, um, you know, if, if you want to be more effective, try and adopt those sorts of traits and really get into it. You're going to have to research it a lot more than what we're showing you today, but we'll have some references near the end. And last one before I hand it over to Grant. I'm just going to give you a quick example of what leadership, uh, service leadership with Māori sounds like. All right, so instead of saying, why are they so hard to reach? You, you should try and say, what do I need to do to reach them? Or what do I need to stop doing? Or what do I need to keep doing? Okay, so it's, there's not always something wrong with Māori that seems to be the default setting sometimes, there's something wrong with them. So instead of looking at it like that, we look at it like, what can I do? Uh, instead of saying, this program will help, we can say, how can this program grow and continue to help without me? Because ideally, you want that good stuff to happen with or without you. Because it's not about us going into the community and saving people, it's about them saving themselves and working for themselves. Uh, I won't do all of them, but I'll do a couple more. Um, you could ask, how does what I do help you? Instead of saying that, you could say, how does what I do help your whole family, your whole hapu, the iwi, and the community? Um, yeah, we want to try and take the focus away from that one person to the collective that they come from. Because Māori don't go out and think, okay, I'm just going to do this for me. They always thinking about the family unit. Um, one more. I know what is best for you. Okay. We want to change that to 
let's discuss what you feel is best for you and your family and how can we make that happen together. All right. A lot of uh, Māori feel sometimes that people don't listen. So that's, that's a way that we can listen and share the power with them around their own water. All right. So I hope that helps you. I hope that gave you a bit of a foundation for what we're moving on to. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Grant, and he's going to get into the good stuff. Kia ora, Grant. Kia ora, te nā koe, uh, Mariana. A hui anō tō tahi me mihi atu ki a koe, Mariana. Uh, mō kupu mahana ki a mātou i mui te timatango tēnei wānanga. Nō reira ki a koe tēnā koe. O te rā ki a tātou katoa e aku rangatira ko taimai nei i tēnei ata me mihi atu. Kia koutou, te nā koutou, nau mai haere mai. A ko hurui ki te maunga, ko whakapara te awa, ko te ihi o nehua, te whare tūpuna, ko eru nehua raua, ko te tāwaka, ko haia ngā tūpuna, ko kahu kuri te tangata, ko ngāti hau te hapu, ko ngā puhi nui tonu, te iwi, nō reira te nā koutou, te nā koutou, Morning, everyone. My name is Grant Bergen, and I hail Mediana's map was had us upside down. <laughs> so I hail from the Tai Uh Just a very quick introduction of myself. I've just recently, in the past month actually, commenced work as the CEO of the Public Health Association uh, for New Zealand. And prior to that, I've worked for five years in regional economic development in Northland. <clears throat> I was really pleased to do that because it gave me a really good understanding of the economic determinants of health. And I worked as the point man in Northland for Shane Jones and the Provincial Growth Fund. Uh, my background, I've got 25 years background in public health and I'm really pleased uh, to join you all today uh, because I don't know you, I don't know your background or your experiences in health promotion, forgive me if, if what I cover is old ground for you. Uh, I'm going to stick to the time frames that Mediana has given me. Uh, but at the end, I do want to encourage you all that if you have any questions for me, Mediana, uh, please do ask and we will try and answer them for you. Uh, finally, I, I, before I commence this, I do want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule for joining us this morning. So, uh, kia ora to you. And I think without further ado, Mediana, can I kick off into the first uh, kaupapa? Yep, go ahead. Okay, look, so just a very quick opening statement. And the opening statement goes like this. We will all know this because this is how we're living our lives, uh, that we are living through unprecedented and uncertain times. Uh, I'm 64, I'm almost 65 years old, and I have a really reasonable sense of the history uh, now and, and previously, but the times that we're living in right now are just unprecedented. So COVID-19 has turned the world upside down in terms of the pandemic. Of course, in 1918, 1917, we had the Spanish flu that went through, uh, but this COVID-19, the impacts of COVID-19 is going to be long lasting. I think we're witnessing uh, in a spectacular sense, the implosion of the United States of America. I suspect that we're seeing the rapid decline of the USA as the most powerful country in the world. I think we're living through that right now. Uh, and then there are myriads of public health, health promotion, population health issues that we are charged with the responsibility of addressing. So, for example, we've got climate change, we've got inequalities, we've got racism, homelessness, you know, whatever. We've, we've just got a whole range of them. And we are addressing those issues in the context of factionalism, 
the polarization that it's evident right throughout the world and indeed in our own country. And within those dynamics, we are charged with getting on and doing the do in our various communities. So the corridor that I'm going to uh, speak to you just now relates uh, specifically to working with Māori communities wherever you are in the country. So here's the first point I want to make. If you are non-Māori, and forgive me if you know this, if you are non-Māori, I want to start by observing a fundamental difference between the Māori worldview and the Western worldview that may or may not be evident to you. And it is to do with the first person singular, I, and the first person plural, we. I, we. So as a generalization, Māori view the world from the perspective of the we. So our culture prioritizes the needs of the group over the needs of the individual. Uh, in fact, Mason Jury, in one of his, I think it was Why Order, I remember him writing <clears throat> in Why Order, and he talked about from the Māori perspective, if you're prioritizing the individual, this is from our perspective as Māori, that is seen to be a more immature uh, position of regarding society as a whole than, than regarding the needs and the wants of the collective. Uh, so Māori, we're not the only ones who view the world from that collectivistic perspective. Um, Māori do it, Pacifica peoples do it, Asian peoples do it, uh, people from the Southeast Asian continent, Indian people and so on, First Nations, many, many people around the world view the world from the lens using the we as opposed to the I. But if you don't understand that, and you're working with Māori communities or other communities who come from that perspective, uh, you're going to struggle uh, to work with them. Uh, so uh, let me get into how can health promoters better serve hapu and Māori communities in the post-COVID world. Uh, I'm going to talk about knowledge first. I need to look at my clock, five minutes. Um, so the first point I want to raise <clears throat> around you being able to better serve hapu and Māori communities is this. When you go and work with communities, it doesn't, actually it doesn't have to be Māori communities, it doesn't matter which communities, you need to bring your A game to the table. Uh, you can't be apathetic. You really need to be energised and you need to be ready. So part of the preparedness on your part is knowledge. I'm gonna split the knowledge into a number of different kinds of knowledge, which I, I see as essential to working effectively with communities. The first knowledge and the most important knowledge is the knowledge of yourself. Uh, if you don't know who you are, if you do not have a clear understanding of the values that drive you, the values that get you out of bed in the morning when you're like, uh, can't be bothered. If you don't know what those values are, they are fundamental to who you are. They affect your behavior and they contribute to the actions that you take every day. They are deep seated, subconscious, they're internal to you. If you are not aware of who and what you are and your place, then you really need to get jiggy with that very quickly. Because if you're not conscious, and I have to say this, uh, the journey of understanding the self is a journey that never stops. So you will do this if you are a reflective person, and I encourage you to be so, you will do this for the rest of your life. The Grant Bergen who began working in public health in 1988 
is not the same Grant Bergen who is sitting at this table addressing you now. My name is the same. There's a whole lot about me that has changed in between, but I need to make sure that I understand who and what I am before I can address anything that I want to address and be effective in this world. So know yourself, know your values and all of that kind of stuff. Know also that if there is a disconnect between the values that drive you internally and your actions externally, that manifests itself immediately to the people who you're working with. Uh, fraud is a difficult word to use, but it does manifest itself. It comes across that you are disingenuous, you are inauthentic to yourself. You might not have said a thing, but people can pick up whether you're being true to yourself. Uh, so there has to be alignment between the internal Grant Bergen and the external, how I manifest my, my values in the work that I do. That's the first, no, no, around knowledge, know yourself. Number two, this is, I mean, obviously this is basic stuff. Know your work and be properly prepared. Don't be lazy. Uh, busyness is a laziness of a sort, by the way. We all get busy, Grant, I get busy. Uh, but actually it's a kind of laziness. You can be as busy as you want. It's about being effective. So if you're gonna go and do your work, you have gotta know your work and you've gotta be properly re prepared. Reflect on what it is that you're doing. Um, Mediana touched on this. <clears throat> so uh, what did my, my friend used to say to me, don't have the Jesus syndrome. I, I don't mean to be offensive to Christians, forgive me, uh, about I'm gonna go and save the world, you see what I mean? So be very careful about having that syndrome in you, you know what's best for others and you're gonna go and save the world. So you do need to know your work. Uh, the question I ask myself is, so it, is the work that I'm going to do, will it enable people to grow and realize their potential? Or am I just perpetuating a dependency of those people on myself or the system? So the, the aim of it at all, of course, is to enable people to realize their potential. Uh, my kids used to roll their eyes. I'd say, you know, give a person a fish, you feed them for the day, teach them how to fish. Well, that's right. So just be cognizant that when you're going into communities, ask the question, am I adding to or taking away from? So know your work, know your community. Uh, don't go in blind. If you're working with Māori communities, take advice if you're non-Māori. Uh, you need to know the people, the issues, the nuances, the power brokers. Uh, every community is different. Um, if you're non-Māori, Māori know when you're trying hard to be respectful, when you're trying to understand who the iwi is, who the hapu is, the names of the mona, the names of the marae, that is real respect. Uh, for me, as a person from the north, from Ngāpuhi, I know that as soon as I go out of my boundaries, I know this intuitively, by the way, when I go out of my boundaries, I'm going into someone else's house. And when I go into someone else's house, I remember my manners. Uh, if I go into your house, I take my shoes off, I respect your house as yours. So for Māori, when we go into someone else's area, we exercise our manners and we treat, we know we are the guest and they, they are the people uh, who are the home people. So, just, so when you know your community, know your place in it and know how to work appropriately uh, with your communities. Obviously treat people with respect. Um, and also know before you go and know what it is that you're looking to achieve. Uh, you know, and obviously the advice is, it's not what we want to achieve in terms of being ag agencies and agents of agencies. First and foremost, it's what does that community want? You know, so part of the homework is knowing what the community wants and looking to align. We're famous as agencies, particularly government agencies. We know everything. We got all the advice, got all the money, you know, all of that. We're famous for going in and getting it completely wrong. Uh, so know what it is that you're seeking to achieve 
ensure it aligns with what people within the communities, their, their aspirations before you go and, and, and do anything. The second point on working well with communities is relationships. So public health is about people. You need to have excellent relationship skills, not just good, you've got to have excellent relationship skills. One moment you're talking to the mayor of the local town, the next minute you're talking to a kaumatua or queer in her house, in the community, the next minute you're talking to your GM or whatever. So you've got to have the range of skills that, enable you, that will enable you effectively to engage right across because your purpose is to mediate action. You've got to mediate action and get stuff across the line in order to progress the well-being of the communities that you're working with. You need to have emotional intelligence. Uh, you know, don't, don't, if you're not a people person, you need another job because you do need to love people, work well with people in order to work in this mahi. Uh, and if you're not good at that, maybe not the right job for you. So you need to have really good relationship skills. You've got to stay in the middle. There's a time to be a mongrel uh, and there's a time to exercise humility. Now, sometimes in the course of doing the work that we do, we've got to have both those skills. I'm less inclined these days because I'm 64, 65, around using the mongrel in me. There is a time and place for going hard. And of course, around exercising that humility. Humility gets people to lean into you as opposed to get repelled by you. Um, so that's the stuff that I want to say around relationships. The right effort. The, there are two more things I want to talk about. One is when you go in, you've got to do the right effort. Uh, quote the example, had a bunch of Māori public health activists chomping at the bit, wanting to go hard. The problem was we were going to go hard down the wrong track, 100 miles an hour, you know, all enthusiastic and that. We would have done the wrong thing. So you need the right effort applied at the right time, right place, doing the right thing. You know, those, all of those rights come together. Make sure you line them up. And then when you're confident that you know exactly what you're going to do, it's the right thing, right time, right place, then hit it. Hit it. Be unambiguous about what you do. Go hard. And go hard for the community as opposed to go hard for you or your agency. Go hard for the community. And the final thing, and again, this is stuff we all know, you need to know if when you go hard uh, that the outcomes and things that, that you were charged to achieve, we've got limited resources. They're highly contestable. You need to ensure that if you invest time and energy into doing a certain thing, you have to assess whether that was effective. Therefore, evaluation is critical. Uh, most of our agencies, 99% of them, that's a requirement. If you've got funding, you're gonna, you're gonna spend, invest that funding in doing whatever program you're gonna do. Make sure that you're not wasting money. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's already been done 10 times over, whether, it, whether it's in New Zealand or elsewhere, do the background work before you go in and do anything. Evaluation is critical. What can we do better? You're going to do an evaluation of this session here. Uh, what can we do better? What worked well? What can we do better? Did we get a good return on investment? I had to do this again. What, what would I do uh, differently? So for me, I just want to sum up in terms of this very brief, quick conversation, 20 minutes, I think. Um, these are the points that I wanted to get across to you. Number one, know the difference between the I versus the we. That is particularly invisible for people who are non-Māori. But if you're going to work with Māori communities, just get yourself jiggy around the differences there. Number two, know yourself firstly. Uh, if you don't know yourself, um, then do that work. Know your community, your work, and what you want to achieve. And in all of this knowledge, Make sure that you're reflecting what communities want as opposed to what we want, my boss wants. What do the communities want? Communities know. Peter Crampton, Professor Peter Crampton said yesterday, and I hope was at, you know, if we haven't got the communities with us, forget it. Forget it. So we've got to reflect community aspirations in the work that we do. Number three, relationships. We're nothing. 
uh, without our relationships, our effective relationships in the community with our workmates, with, with local central government, you need to have really good relationships. Um, and then the final point I wanted to make was around the outcomes. If we invested time and energy, was it worth it? Uh, was it a good investment? And kia ora, it's a really quick, you know, snapshot. Um, obviously, we, we could go on forever about it. But there you go. That's the first part of it. Kia ora, people. Happy to take questions. Kia ora, Uncle Grant. Thank you for that. Did we get many questions coming in, Lavinia? No, um, Miriana, we have no questions at all. So um, if we do have any questions, everyone feel free to um, enter them into chat and I'll relay them to um, Grant. Hey, and the other, I think I said it before, hey, dumb questions are the best ones. So yes, if yes. you think your Things question dumb, dumb question. yeah, don't worry, go for it. So I've got my eyes um, fixed on the chat section. If anybody has any questions, go for it. Uh, actually, I've got a question, Grant. What's well, not from me, but it's from someone who um, gave feedback, uh, sorry, did the pre webshop activity. And it uh, was around how can, forgive me if this person is listening, I don't have my, you can jump on the chat and correct me. I was around how can non-Māori, Pākehā and migrants, how can they collectively uh, get together to, to work to understand how to work with Māori better? I think that was the gist of the question. Any, any, any comments from you about that perspective? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... So to whoever asked that question, there are lots and lots and lots of Māori that would love to work with you, um, be with you, spend time with you, take you to the marae, invite you into our homes. Um, there are heaps of us who would just embrace you and bring you into our communities and our culture and ask that conversely you share your own culture mm. with us so the notion for maori around tino rangatiratanga which speaks to us about self-determination the moment you have an understanding of who and what you are as a maori person the more it is that you appreciate of course it's a mirror you see what i mean uh, someone who comes from Asia or Wales or England, Scotland, doesn't matter where, the more I understand my right to be who I am in terms of my identity, the more it is that I love the singing of the people in the valleys in Wales or the French language or the Chinese culture or whatever. So I would just say that if you are shy, uh, but you do want to uh, meet up and make friends with Māori and learn more about Māori politics and culture, I'm telling you now, there are so many people that would love to embrace you and do that and to learn from your culture. Mm. Um, we have uh, a, a question here for you, Grant from um, Kelly Nels, um, she asks, when it comes to beginning a relationship, would you approach it more formally and email, call to set up a time to meet, or is it okay to pop by to visit? In brackets, I work with a lot of kohanga, community groups, etc. Yeah, um, so look, if it was, uh, if it was the first visit, and, and uh, I had not been there before. Uh, I, I think it's just a question of um, uh, courtesy and manners, really. Uh, I would signal uh, to whoever I was going to visit 
uh, that I was going to come and obviously work out the appropriate time. Um, if I had already been in there, and again, it depends on the circumstance um, and how familiar you are uh, with the particular people or groups. If you're really familiar, then pop in, of course. If it's right at the start of uh, the relationship in respect to the people who you're visiting, to allow them the opportunity to prepare. And the word we use in Māori is manaki, to look after. Uh, as a guest coming in, they will want to look after you. Then uh, give them the time. Say, look, I'm keen to visit. What's a good time for you? Uh, they will let you know. And that gives them the opportunity to prepare. Um, this is not a question, Grant, but uh, Maria Milson has just thank you for, um, thanked you for your words and says there's a lot to reflect on. Mm. Thank you, Miriam. We have another question from the Asian Network, Tani. Um, mm. In some Asian cultures, the society sometimes a bit too much highlights the collective value that often ends up underestimating individual values in particular for young generations who have difficulty to follow up those traditional values. What do you think of it happening in the Māori community? Now, I'm not too sure whether I have, um, did you get that grant? Yes, I did, I did. Yes, I do understand that. Um, yeah, and if, I mean, if I can just reflect uh, an Asian uh, Buddhist perspective, um, which is about finding finding the middle road, um, you know, I think it was Aristotle who, who said, find the golden mean. So that, that tension between individualism and collectivism, uh, I do agree we can overemphasize either or. Mm. Uh, and I think it's the Buddhist and also Aristotle uh, talked about finding the <clears throat> middle road in all of that. So, so, so my view is, uh, appreciate the value of both perspectives. Uh, uh, cultures will naturally incline one way or the other. Appreciate the perspective of both and then um, find the middle way for yourself. Thank you, Grant. I don't know how much more, much more time we have, Mariana. Do we have time for um, another question? There's another one. Yep. All right. This is from Emma Williams, Grant, and she asks, as a Maori worker, how do I convince my non-Māori manager that I often have to network with other Māori from the community at non-public health kaupapa, that is at Tangi, Maraihui, unrelated to agency kaupapa? Yeah, yeah, it's the classic collectivistic perspective, uh, the, 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 the tension. Um, yeah, that's a real challenge. Uh, we face that all through our lives. It's mediating that space between, if once you get into that uh, from the Māori, an example is tangi, right? Uh, so we have tangi and then the Māori's all want to go off to the tangi because we have to satisfy our cultural obligations. But for our non-Māori friends, they're like, oh my God, they've gone to another bloody tangi. You know, and they throw their hands up and all of that. So I think it's about, um, um, it's not about judging, but it's about sharing information that allows people to understand why it is that we do these kinds of things. Uh, that when you meet with people, you cannot go straight to the issue. There's the whole thing around establishing relationships, um, understanding each other. And I think people from Asian cultures understand this as well. You cannot just go and don't know someone and go bang. Um, but if you're from that Western uh, forgive the generalizations again, orientation where the preference is to go straight to the issue, then that is such a, you know, oh my God, what a waste of time. They sit around, they do all the hui and no dui. Um, so I think finding a way to explain uh, the differences uh, in a way that's non judgmental and allows people to understand, I think that's the way, that's the way to do that. It, it is a challenge. I accept it's a challenge. Kapai Lavinia, any more? Is that was it the last one? 
one more. Sorry, Mariana, I was trying to um, do mm -hmm. something. Um, there's no, that's the last question. There is one from Elaine. Oh, yeah. Where have you ever come up against a negative attitude with in service delivery agents to incorporate a Māori perspective into their agencies? Yes. Yes, absolutely, all the time. Mm. Um, uh, actually, all through my working life, it, it has been a challenge. Um, and uh, you, you do require, uh, you know, that emotional intelligence because there's time when you, there are times when you're just like, oh my God, I'm so over this. You know, I, um, and we, we're all humans and we're all subject to those kind of sentiments. It happens again and again and again. And again, I think the, the answer is, um, the soft answer is bringing people along, educating so that they understand. Um, yeah, there are moments when you can be, oh, I'm a bit over it. So yes, I've experienced it. I've experienced that all through my life. Yeah. Kapai, is that it for our question? Yep, definitely no more questions. Is everybody um, happy with that? Any more questions? Do we have any time, Mariana, for any more? Or should we? Uh, we do need to push on. We've got one more one more question to um, talk about. So if anyone has any more, they can they can type them up and we can address them after this session. Kapai? Kapai Grant? Hi, Kapai. All right. Heidi Tony, Heidi Tony Tato. All right, so, oops, topic two. We're going to move on to our second topic now. All right, and that is determinants of health from a tangata whenua perspective. What are the implications in the real world and what should we focus on moving forward? Um, so but again, before I hand it over to Grant, I'm just going to go through some really, um, some examples of what that can look like um, and some issues that are, at the forefront right now of what's happening in the world. Um, but first of all, disclaimer, public service announcement. Just want to make it very, very clear. Um, Māori them are not a homogenous people. Okay, and that's all right as well. So Māori are people that think, feel and act differently based on our hapu, our iwi, our tradition, our religion, our education, our history, our age, our upbringing and our connection to the Māori culture. So we're all very, very different. My view on something can be very, very different to Grant's, and that's all right. Um, but there are some common themes throughout uh, Māori dim and Māori culture, which we're going to briefly touch on right now to, to, to do with um, Māori, Māori health. All right. So we're going to look at different different things from different perspectives. So what this is, this is Māori. Well, this is one of my maunga. What some people see when they look at this is a walking track. You know, some great views, a good way to exercise, and a big giant patch of dirt. What Tangata Whenua see is whakapapa. That's my whakapapa. That's where I come from. That's an atua, a god. That's history, and that's tribal affiliation. So here we're going to go through things where it's one thing, but two very different ways of seeing something. Our next example Mata Ora and Moko Kauai, so that's uh, Tama Itzi, and that's my auntie at the bottom there, Auntie Fetu, uh, with their Moko Kauai. So some people, when they look at this, they see scribbles, or they see beautiful patterns and pictures, and then some people see unprofessionalism. How are you going to get a job with that? What we see, what Tangata Whenua see, is, again, whakapapa, identity, family, and birthright. Okay, it's, it's, it's like having a picture of your great great grandmother on you and you carry it with you all the time it's not something that you want other people just taking in and doodling around with uh iwi checkpoint so i was involved in iwi checkpoint uh this year uh for lockdown that's that that was our one there so what some people see when they look at this is uh criminals breaking the law bullies just intimidating people rebels uh and 
you know, some people, when they look at the situation, when they're driving up, they see a bunch of people stopping me from exercising my legal rights. Um, yes. What we see from a tangata whenua perspective is protection of whakapapa. No one else is going to protect my kuia and komatua the way I will. So we're, we're going to step in there and protect them. It's about ma it was about managing and controlling and tracing movement. And it was also about helping Fano. So we, we, we knew that travel was limited. So together we worked to make sure that um, someone was doing the van run every day to go and get uh, kai for all the old people. Okay, so different, same, same thing, but different idea and understanding of what's happening. All right, clinical interviews and spaces. Some people think I'm helping. This is my way of helping and giving back. I'm getting the job done. Hey, this is part of a process and also following solutions. I'm trying to help you say, I'm trying to save a life here. You know, that's what, that's what motivates people in these spaces sometimes. What Tangata Whenua see are very sterile spaces, devoid of wairua, devoid of any type of spirituality. They feel that there's no genuine care and that those spaces are negative judgment. You know, when I go on there, he's just going to judge me and tell me this and that. Also, they see time away from work, which means lost money. You know, I'm all right. I don't really want to, you know, I got bills to pay. So that's in that space, that's what tangata whenua are thinking and feeling sometimes. Uh, land occupation. What some people see, lawbreakers. It's a land sale transaction. You know, it happened. The transaction happened, move forward. Some people see troublemakers. Some people see bludgers. And some people see land being wasted. Because we need the land, right? We have a housing crisis. We need land. We need to build houses. Where are we going to put them? What Tangata Whenua see is protection again and connection of whakapapa. They feel like their whenua is being ripped away and they're being, they're being displaced. They no longer can have that connection with their land if, if they're no longer allowed to be there. And also of history repeating. Crowded hospital rooms. That's my mum there, my brother at the start of this year. All right. What you can't see in that picture is the 20 other bodies um, surrounding my mum. All right, so what some people see is people getting in the way, people stopping staff from doing their job. You know, you're making others uncomfortable because we have a tendency to sing, to karakia, to play music, to laugh, to cry. Um, and we have this thing where we cannot leave our family alone at all, ever, when they're in hospital, they should never ever be alone. Um, but some people see it as taking up space and resources. What we see is togetherness in time of sadness, time of pain, time of loss, and also sometimes death. We see togetherness when uh, when the wairua is transitioning from the earth realm into the spiritual realm, taking the journey to te reringa wairua. And that's a whole process, that's a whole other journey for that for that person, for their, for their spirits. So we don't want to leave that, them alone. We want to, you know, not just, I'm not just talking me, one person, the whole of the family want to be there for their part. And unity, kotahitanga, unity. Māori incarceration. What some people see is a legal process, justice system working, criminals getting what they deserve, and people that are beneath the rest of society. Okay. They're scum. They should be kept away from everyone else. What some tangata whenua see is an unfair system. They see people being disconnected from their papa, whakapapa again, a system that doesn't work. And when they look at this picture, uh, they see whānau. They see people. Uh, I think this is the last one. So Māori representation in organisations. So you might have your own organisation uh, and also local and national politics. Uh, you know, uh, so there's a, a been a push lately around Māori wards and even um, Māori seats in parliament. So what people see when they look at this is racism. Some people say, this is racist. 
why, why should they get special treatment? They see it as segregation. Um, you know, we should all be one nation, but this is the opposite of that. Um, and they see uh, te tiriti or waitangi as something that's outdated and not relevant for today. So it does, you know, so we shouldn't really be following those guidelines. What tangata whenua see when they look at Māori representation is a Māori voice. Accurate representation of Māori aspirations, uh, te tiriti or waitangi being honoured, and also councils and politicians that don't care about Māori when they're, when they're uh, uh, advocating for referendums to shut them down. So what I just wanted to highlight before I hand it back to Grant is that there are different sides to the coin and there are different ways that people are affected, but not everyone understands the tangata whenua perspective. And it can be different depending on the situation, the event that's happening or that has been happening uh, and that sort of stuff. Actually, I think there's one more, sorry. This is really important because this was spoken about this morning as well. Uplift of babies by government departments. What some people see, okay? Protection of that baby. They're doing what they feel is right to protect that baby. You know, it's it's the law, it's, it's order, it's, what it's what is just by the law you know some people see this as a better option you know this is a better option for their baby to be taken away from their mum and some people see if there's no other option what else are we going to do we need to protect their child tangata whenua see this as severing cutting ripping of whakapapa when you separate your mother from the child you are ripping that whakapapa apart uh, when they see things like this, they see government departments that can't be trusted. It's very hard when you go into the deep, deep Māori communities, the trust for government departments is very, very low. Um, when they see these sorts of things, they see methods that don't work. You know, um, we've seen this before and it didn't work last time. Uh, you see Māori, tangata whenua see family trauma and abuse. And they say, again, history repeating. So these types of things that are happening, um, not the voice of tangata whenua is not always listened to and not legitimized. What do they know? Or it's okay because we're doing what's right, though. This is the law that's what's right. So again, like what Grant said, contested tensions. And how do we, how do we, do both. How do we do the right thing for everyone? Which is, I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer for that. Um, but it's something that we as health promoters have to flesh out and figure out as we go along, as well as keep an eye on the big prize and, and work out how we can fix all that stuff as well. So yeah, I hope that was um, insightful again. Um, and now again, I'm going to pass it back to Grant. Um, so the determinants of health from a tangata whenua perspective, I, I found this quite a challenge. Uh, so, so this required me to reflect on the traditional relationship that we as Māori had uh, with our environment and with the cosmos. And uh, the, the, uh, both the interconnectedness of us as human beings with that environment and the interdependence that we also have with the environment and with the cosmos so that uh, Māori viewed our relationship with Papa Tuanuku, the Spenua and our cosmos in a sense as one. Uh, so in modern day thinking we talk about systems thinking that when you touch one element of the system, you affect everything else. If I go down into some of the detail to show how that is reflected in our language, then let me bring up uh, simply two words. Uh, the first word is whenua. Uh, for most people, when you think of whenua, uh, whenua is the land upon which our, our feet stand. 
many of you will know also uh, that Fenua uh, is also the placenta. It's the afterbirth when a child is born. In a traditional sense for Māori, uh, when a child is born, there are lots of rites that were gone through pre-European time where that whenua was placed in the earth. The placing of the whenua of the child in the earth created a connection between that child and that particular place, which cemented that person's identity. And in our thinking, it was forever. We have an expression which talks about when you are connected to the whenua, you are properly named around that connection to the whenua. You understand who and what you are. You will never, ever get lost in this world. Now, that has implications for mental health. One word. Let me talk about another word. The, the other word is mokopuna. Moko, we talk about our mokos. Mokos are grandchildren. A moko is the facial, uh, we call it a tattoo, is the wrong word, uh, on our face. What it does in the old days is it talked of whakapapa and genealogy on the face. Again, relating to identity. Who am I? Where am I able to stand? What's my place? in this whole thing called the Svenua and the cosmology, the universe. It's identity. What's my place in this universe? So the moko, which is the tattoo, if you think of a puna, a puna is a pool of water. Now, pre-European times, we never had the mirrors. When a person would look into the puna, into the water, he or she, that person would see their reflection. So a moko puna, a grandchild, is a reflection of your papa. the connection between the past, the present, and indeed the future uh, is there in two words. So if we talk about the determinants of health in a traditional sense for Māori, they relate to things like, and I can't go into the detail of it, mana tangata, the power of the authority of the person, the human, tangata, the human being, the authority, the power of a human being, the essence of being human, mana whenua, the essence of the whenua and the interconnectedness of Māori with the whenua, mana atua, the essence and the power and the authority of our connection with our gods. You combine the two. Those are just three, mana tangata, mana atua, and mana whenua. Those are just three words. But in the language of our people, it speaks to us continuously of the relationship that we have with the whenua, with our earth, with our environment, and the universe above, and our cosmology. And it is in these relationships that we derive our well-being or otherwise. Uh, so for me, that is uh, a very, very brief, what would take wānanga, heaps and heaps, a very brief uh, pulling together of some aspects of the Māori perspective of self-determination uh, and... Um, understanding those determinants of health uh, from a tangata whenua perspective. Nowadays, we talk about economic determinants, which is true. Uh, we talk about the social determinants, you know, poverty is the big one, uh, and so on. Um, the commercial determinants, I'm pleased to see that becoming part of our vocabulary. Um, but look, uh, so very quickly, uh, that's just some words from me around the Māori perspective around determinants of health and incredibly inadequate, my apologies. Kia ora, thank you. Happy to take some, some questions. Yeah, we have a question for you, Grant, from Kerry. Um, how does public health address agencies like Oranga Tamariki taking our babies? 
Yes, I do have a view on that. My view is this. Um, so uh, that particular agency and lots of others, by the way, and I, I don't want to diminish the mana of individuals and my friends, by the way, who work for them, uh, clearly hasn't worked. Uh, I'm right now in relation to the establishment of the Māori Health Authority. I'm advocating on behalf of the PHA, we hand the resources over. Uh, so we've had heaps and heaps of agencies that have failed us dismally. My view is hand the resources over uh, and, and let's try a completely different model. It's an indigenous model that works for us, by us. Uh, let's give it a go. And I say the same too for Tamariki or, you know, for Oranga Tamariki. That's the um, uh, last question we have. Over to you, Mariana. Uh, if anybody else has any other questions, you've still got a little bit of time left. I've got a question. So uh, for you, Grant. So what can we, everyone here listening today, what can we do um, tomorrow on the, on the ground floor, you know, the grassroots level? What kind of things can we start doing at that level that can... Um, make a difference yeah. anything. Yeah, so um, if you're talking specifically around the determinants of health from a Māori's perspective, then I think it's simply around doing, doing the homework and, and um, leaving yourself open to different worldviews and interpretations without trying to exercise a judgment. Uh, so doing your research around different perspectives uh, me, I love, for example, whether it's the Māori perspective, Pacifica perspective, the Chinese perspective, I don't care, French perspective, I'm interested in everyone's perspective. Keeping an open mind to understand why people think and believe the things that they think and believe, and then that enables you to be more effective in your practice when you're working on the ground. Thank you, Grant. I have a question here from Sione Tuitahi. Um, who asks, it, it appears that colonization severs the deep bonds between mana tangata, mana atua, mana whenua. Therefore, colonization is a huge determinant. What's your view? Oh, I absolutely do agree with that. Uh, colonization took away a lot, not just from Māori, but from lots of um, peoples all around the world. And uh, my view is uh, absolutely acknowledge that. And then I think the responsibility on us, all of us uh, who share this land and other lands is to deconstruct the vestiges of colonization that exist now. So where we can see that there is uh, you know, the perpetuation of those long-standing racist, whatever it is, um, uh, vestiges of that that remain, then I think we have a responsibility to uh, examine those and then deconstruct them and move forward. So our job is to create a better world for our children and our grandchildren. And part of that is acknowledging the role of colonization. Time to move on, guys. So true. Thank you, Grant. Uh, another question from Joy Dawkins. Do popular frameworks of DOH, example from WHO Commission on DOH, Michael Mama, make sense from Tangata Whenua perspective? Can we flip, view, understand this framework to be more appropriate or need to start from somewhere else entirely? Yeah, um, forgive me, I've been, I've been out for quite a while of public health, so I can't, uh, when you talked about Marmot's uh, framework, I haven't got it in my head. Um, uh, so there's two things that I wanna say about that. There are lots of frameworks, and so we have indigenous models, uh, and my, my uh, we have indigenous models, we have Western models, and we have an intersection of the two. And uh, my preference is, if I'm talking with, with uh, in relation to the Māori worldview, then my preference is to go not with Marmot, uh, but to go with Māori scholars who are informed from the Māori worldview. Uh, there's lots of them around, Mihirati Ma, Mason Jury, there's a whole bunch. Uh, and I would take my lead from Māori, and it's not disrespecting Marmot or anyone else. Um, I would take my lead if I was going to do anything in relation to Māori. Yeah. 
Yep. Thank you, Grant. Um, that's the last question, Mariana. Kapai, thank you, Lavinia. Um, oh, well, we're almost finished. Um, but before we go on to the next part, is there any last um, gems or anything that you want to share, Grant? No. Uh, so, yeah, this. Uh, I think we're at the brink of some massive changes in public health, health promotion. Um, I think that uh, the fundamentals of those decisions are going to be made before December this year. I think that if we in public health are going to be able to contribute to the changes that are going to be put in place before March next year, now's the time that we we have to be active, which is why Tani Cassidy and HBA are doing this stuff today and lots of others are, and so is Sione and I are doing stuff as well. But it's possible that the, the pillars that are going to be put down uh, in the first quarter of next year are going to set are going to set the future potentially for the next 20, 30 years around public health. So what's mm -hmm. going on now is absolutely uh, crucial. And I encourage all of you to uh, get that helicopter view, have a look about, have a look at what's going on now and contribute. Um, you know, contribute to the conversation and the debates that are going on right now. And I wish you all the very best. Kia ora, kia ora Grant, thank you for that. All right, um, last little thing that we need you to do, guys, is just, if you can, um, just give some short feedback in the chat along these lines of um, what went well for you today in today's webby shop. Where can we improve? Uh, what other health promotion topics you'd like to explore? And how did you find out about this webby shop? Um, so please, can you get on the chat and do that now? And while you're doing that, um, I just wanted to say thank you again to you, Grant, um, and to everyone out there. Um, you know, talking about the things that we talked about, it's, it's clear that um, it's not an easy process. You know, um, advocating and working for Tangata Whenua and Māori communities is not a uh, straightforward, easy process, and it is fraught with a lot of tensions and challenges, personal, professional, uh, and all that, but um, Heidi Toru, keep going. Um, this is not the last webinar shop that we'll be doing about this sort of stuff. So please join us in the future if you want to continue these conversations, and we'll continue to bring uh, more um, gurus like you, Grant. In um, yeah, was there something you wanted to share, Lavinia? Yes, when we get set up for the photo, please, everyone, whoever's um, willing to take a photo. <clears throat> They could unvideo themselves. Um, oh. I'm also keen. This will also be shared on um, social media. Um, if everybody's keen, there. Yeah. Thank you. Kapai. All right, then. So I will stop sharing this page. We can do our photo and then I'll do Karakia Fakamutunga. Kapai. Kapai Grant. Hi. Kapai Sione, anything you want to share, Sione? Just a big, big thank you. Uh, to you, Grant. Uh, it shows that it's very timely that you come back mm. uh, to the field and continue that much needed leadership in the space of Public Health Association in uh, collaboration with uh, Health Promotion Forum, College mm. of Public Health Medicine, and of course, Health Promotion uh, Agency. Uh, it's about your rau rau and our rau rau, and we can uh, move forward the hawara of the whole nation, everyone, not just Maori, not just Pacific, not just a sector, everyone. And thank you again for today and well done, Mariana. And thank you everyone for coming along, contributing. Uh, this is the beginning of great uh, conversations and, and good work. Thank you.